Hello, rogues, and welcome to Beyond the Dungeon. If you've been following along, then you know that this is the show where we talk about TTRPGs that are not Dungeons and Dragons. We get an overview of some rules, build a character, and learn how to play. Today, we are venturing into the untamed and mysterious world of Deadlands, where the Weird West awaits. The Weird West is like fantasy and western and horror all tossed into a blender, put on the highest setting, and mixed up. Then you bake that concoction on a rock in the scorching Arizona desert, and there you have it. You've got your vampires, you've got your zombies, you've got your werewolves, and you've got eldritch horrors that all roam the lands, making it a perilous yet fantastical place. It's a realm where the supernatural intertwines with the rugged landscape of the Old West, creating a unique and enthralling experience for all. In the weird west of Deadlands, you will find many similarities to the wild west of our own world. But... There are still some fantastical differences besides all the creatures. So for one, the Civil War lasted much longer than it did in our history. There was a great quake in 1868 out in California that escalated some things, uh, turned California into like a labyrinthian sea of canyons, and they found a new super fuel called Ghost Rock. And what's really neat about Ghost Rock is that while it powers all of these really fantastical machines and gizmos, it screeches when you burn it. Let's get started on our character. All right, we're going to dive into character creation. So the first thing we do is we devise our concept, and you're going to want a Wild West character concept, whether it's a rugged gunslinger, a quick-witted gambler, maybe a mysterious preacher. All kinds of characters are welcome. You are going to embrace your Wild West persona and just really let your imagination roam free. Our next step is typically where we would pick a species. However, in Deadlands, as of the recording of this video, the only species allowed are humans. Humans are the main protagonists, so you'll be stepping into the boots of these resilient and diverse individuals. Step three, we are going to choose our hindrances. You can take as many hindrances as you want. However, you only get four points worth of hindrances. So you can pick however many, but you only get four benefits out of it. All of the hindrances from Savage Worlds are available in Deadlands, and they've added some new ones. These are going to add some strengths or weaknesses to your character. All right, step four is going to be our attributes. So in each one of your attributes, you're going to start with a D4, and then you have five points to spend to increase that die type. Raising an attribute by a die costs one point up to a maximum of a D12. Additionally, those hindrances that we got earlier, you can spend two hindrance points to increase an attribute die by one type. So that means going from a D4 to a D6, and then a D6 to a D8, and a D8 to a D10, etc. Step five, we've got our skills. Our core skills also start at a D4 for each one, but this time we have 12 points that we can use to buy additional skills. Most of the skills from Savage Worlds Adventure Edition carry over into Deadlands with a couple of exceptions that just don't make sense for the setting. And they've added a new one for the setting called Trade. Now, to up it by one die type, it's one point per die type, except if you're going above the associated attribute, then it's gonna cost two. And just like before, you cannot exceed a D12. So if you have a skill that pertains to strength and your strength is a d6 but you want your skill to be at a d8 you're going to have to spend two points for that step six is going to be our derived stats this is going to be our pace our parry and our toughness and we're going to talk about toughness in the back half of the video your pace is six you're a human it's always six unless you have some equipment or an edge that gives you a faster pace Parry is going to be 2 plus half your fighting skill, and toughness is also going to be 2 plus half your vigor skill. Remember to round down on those calculations. Step 7. Step 6, we talked about edges. Step 7 is where you choose them. As a human, you get a free starting edge as per the Savage World's core, and for each two hindrance points that you haven't spent, you can gain an additional edge. These special abilities will enhance your character's capabilities. Now we start with gear. 
Our heroes are going to start with the clothes on their back and an amount of the appropriate currency for the character background. All characters begin with no less than $250, but you can raise it up to $500 for one hindrance point if you have any left over. For all of your gear, check pages 25 to 37 of the rulebook for a complete list. Step 9. We're almost there. These are our background details. If you haven't named your character, now's the time to do so. Now is also the time to figure out where they're from, why they're traveling, and what they've done for their whole life. And these details will help add depth and personality to your hero as you roleplay them. Step 10. All right. Last step. Here we go. This is where you pick your character's worst nightmare. It can be your personal worst nightmare or just something that you think would be funny. It could be giant spiders. It could be demonic teddy bears. It could be rushing water. Ultimately, what you're going to do is you're going to describe this nightmare and you're going to let the GM know what it is. And it could, some point, come up in the tale. And there you have it. That is your very own Deadlands character ready to roam the treacherous Weird West. Remember, this is a realm full of danger and dark mysteries. So stay sharp, be ready for anything. All right, now for our rules overview. Strap into your saddle. This is going to take a little bit, but we're about to learn how to play this thrilling TTRPG. First thing is what we need to play. So we've got our character, and we're going to need a standard set of die from 4 through D20. And we're going to need one extra D6 of a different color from your standard set, and this is going to be called our wild die. Our GM will have what's known as an action deck which is a standard deck of playing cards with the jokers left in it. And this is for determining initiative. Also, there are some characters that end up playing poker to use magic. Lastly, you need some tokens to represent bennies or benefits for our daring heroes. All right, when combat starts, the GM is going to deal at least one card to every hero and to every NPC villain or groups of NPCs as determined. Those cards could be face up, they could be face down. Either way, they determine your order in the countdown. The GM is then going to count down from ace to deuce, and when your card comes up, it is your turn to declare and resolve your action. If you should draw a joker, you get to act whenever you want, and you add a plus two to all trait and damage rolls. That also goes for the GM's characters. Now, if you have a tie, say two people draw six, you're going to resolve it based on suit. And that goes spade, heart, diamond, club. With spade being the top, club being the bottom. Heroes and villains in Deadlands only have three wounds. They can only take three wounds before they're incapacitated. And this is where that damage threshold that we talked about during character creation comes into play. That is the target number that a damage roll has to equal or exceed to actually cause harm. Once you hit that fourth wound, you're incapacitated. All right, bennies. Bennies are your saviors in the Weird West. At the start of each session, each player gets three benny tokens, and these are use them or lose them. Now, if a player draws a joker, all players get a benny as a special treat. With a Benny, when you spend it, you can re-roll trait rolls, you can recover from shaken, you can prevent wounds, and you can even influence the story. A wild die. When we talked about what you needed, we mentioned the need for a wild die. Player characters and noted NPCs add 1d6 to every trait roll. And the best part of that is, is you take the highest of either die. And either die can ace. So if you roll the highest number, you get to roll that die again and add it to your total. And that's it. There we are. That is a quick overview of how to play Deadlands and an overview of how to build a character. The next portion of this video is going to be my take on Deadlands and some general thoughts. Thanks for watching. General thoughts on Deadlands. I did not like this system years ago. I felt that there was too much randomness in when your character got to go and how much damage your character did 
and it it just it really felt like the game was unbalanced it it felt like the characters were hindered a lot more with these newer rules and the adventure edition i really feel like it's not only more immersive it's a lot more approachable if you are coming from something like dungeons and dragons or even if this is your first rpg you can hop in and get a feel for your character in the setting very quickly and very easily there is very little to hold a player back in this game uh, there are some some odd things that take some getting used to, but that's going to be true of any tabletop, right? Like if you've got Manitou's and you've got a whole lexicon and the magic is a little weird, but it's also really unique and it can be really refreshing. Like you can play poker to enhance your abilities. And the downside to that is that if you lose your poker hand, you uh, you definitely have a little comeuppance coming your way. So if you liked this video, please, you know, hit that like button. Um, if you want more content like this and to see more how-tos on some upcoming games, hit that subscribe so you don't miss them. As always, I'm Rogue Maverick. Keep your wits sharp and your daggers sharper.